Welcome back, my students, to another episode of Comet Class. And in today's lesson, guys, we're going to be looking at Rick Reminder and West Cred's Deadly Class, Volume 5, Carousel. So without further ado, guys, let's jump right into this lesson. Let's go. So the story pretty much starts off with uh, a ton of the students basically at King's Dominion. Now it seems like the the test that was uh, performed in the last volume has concluded and they have started the new semester. And this is where we're introduced to a few new faces such as Guan Zinzelia or Zinzel, I think is how you say her name, and Helmet and this irish kid that I, I don't know what his name was but he kind of goes out of the story really fast so it's not that important um and yeah each of these characters has a pretty unique personality that makes them very likable and it's really cool to see their interactions now we get to see a character that we really know uh saya basically talking to petra now petra as you can tell uh, has a completely new character design uh, basically showing that after she killed Billy, she kind of like went into a state of like surprise. Uh, she basically like tried to hide what she did. And she earned a place with all the people that I guess Shabnam had uh, accumulated basically in the last volume. So she's part of the bad guys now, which was seem pretty obvious with the deal she made with Shabnam in volume 4. Now, uh, Petra basically talks to Saya saying that they're just like each other because they both killed... Uh, someone that they were close to, you know, with Petra being Billy and then Saya supposedly killing uh, Marcus at the end of Volume 4. Uh, but Saya basically just blows her off and, you know, says that they're nothing to lie. So we get to see that Victor basically shows up and talks to Shabnam and his girlfriend. I mean, if you can call her that. And basically, they're kind of like running the school at the moment. They have all the powerful people in their hands basically and victor basically tells them not to forget that victor is actually the strength of the team and is the one that keeps everybody in line and more than anything he's more of a leader than these two uh so we get to see kind of like the power hierarchy that's going on between all these characters and it's really cool now victor basically is told by shabnam that uh he wants to get saya killed basically and Victor basically volunteers and says that he'll be the one to kill Saya, which is really cool. And we also get to see Victor's interactions with um, the other members as well of the group, which is, again, really cool to see how Victor interacts with other people other than Marcus and his group. Now we get to see that uh, Guan basically shows up next to Saya, who's sitting by herself during this like prom dance or whatever this is. And he basically tries to hit on her, and it turns out to go really badly with her leaving him uh, behind. And yeah, so Shabna basically gets told by Master Lin that he wants him to do the speech for the freshmen this year. Um, and Victor and his friend basically spike uh, Shabnam's drink, and this makes Shabnam basically tell the truth. It's like a true serum. And with this true serum, we get to see that Shabnam basically kind of like makes a fool of himself and his crew. And it's just a really funny scene. Eventually, Shabnam basically falls down and they have to go get him and they get him out of there. Uh, overall, really funny scene. Now, Master Lin basically tells the new kid, that Irish kid, that he has to leave King's Dominion. Now, it's implied that he might have gotten killed uh, by Master Lin and his people. I have no idea if he'll ever come back in the future. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty sad because uh, Brandy, I believe is her name, the one that's racist towards Marcus and his people, uh, basically tricked the new kid into breaking the rules in public, and this gets him basically expelled and supposedly killed, at least that's what it seems to be implied. Now, we get, a, get, we get introduced to this new character, basically called, I think his name's Kenji, and Kenji basically has taken over the family business of the Kurosaki, I believe is the name, or Kuroki. And yeah, his father used to be the leader, but apparently he died. And now Kenji is the leader. So he arrives at this old man and old lady's uh, shop and basically forces the old man to commit suicide by stabbing himself on Kenji's blade. And Kenji basically lights up the entire uh, shop on fire after he promised that he wouldn't kill 
the other people, showing how evil this guy really is, and Kenji reveals at the very end that he is Saya's brother. Uh, so yeah, they're gonna go and try to capture Saya and bring her back to the family business, which was a really cool scene, and it really sets up some tension for Saya's character in the future. Now, jumping into Sai, we get to see that she's actually fighting against Master Lin, and Master Lin's basically telling her that her mind's kind of wavering, and that she cares too much about people, uh, showing us that there is a chance that she actually didn't kill Marcus. And yeah, so Master Lin basically hands her her new pledge, basically, and that's in Zelia, I believe is her name. Um, so yeah, so they're gonna have some interactions with each other. Now, Guan, Zelia, and Helmet are basically all uh, in class, and when Guan kind of gets dumped on by the teacher, which was a really funny scene, this is where Saya makes her appearance and basically tells Zelia that, you know, she's her pledge, basically. And they basically invite Saya to go hang out with them, all these new characters. This is where I introduced to Helmet's, you know, roommate, which seems like a really cool character. Basically, a person, I believe he's from another country. Basically saying that he doesn't agree with how Americans are. It's basically just to give a different outlook on American society, which is okay. Um, not the most interesting thing, but it's pretty good. Um, so we get to see basically this whole interaction between Helmet and his roommate basically talking about his goals in being in King's Dominion. Basically wanting to learn how to kill so he can go help his homeland and basically kill people that are racist and stuff like that, which is okay. And this is where they get a knock on the door and this guy comes in basically holding a box and it's revealed that the box is given to Zazeli and she basically gets a rat. So now she's being targeted as a rat whenever the finals come up for the freshman year. So we'll see if anything comes of that in the future and if Saya will protect her instead of what she did with Marcus. Now in the student uh, council assembly room we get to see Victor, Brandy, Shabnam and all the other characters basically contemplating what they need to do like i said they kind of like come to the conclusion that they need to kill saya just saya knows too much and they can tell that master Lin is building up saya to be like the ultimate assassin at least that's what it seems like um so they basically give out the order that they need to do that and like i said victor basically says that he'll take care of it he doesn't need any help but he actually gets the help of his friend with the glasses the guy that killed his boyfriend in the last volume uh, so they're eating along pretty well, which is very interesting because of how Victor's character has been towards those type of people. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll get more into that in the future. Trust me, there's a lot more interesting stuff with Victor in the future, especially regarding that issue with him with those type of people. Uh, but after that, we basically see that Helmet basically pits a fight with Victor and trips him in the hallway of the school. And basically, they're about to get into a fight when Saya basically stops both of them. And tells Helmet that he's made a big mistake because he did this in front of everybody. And now he can be targeted to get killed outside of school or anywhere. Uh, so yeah, we get learned that Helmet basically is a no-holds-barred type of dude. And he's not afraid of anything, uh, which was cool. Now, uh, Guan basically invites uh, Zinzeli to basically go to them to this party. And Zinzeli basically approves. And they go to this uh, type of party, this costume party for Halloween, I guess. I really enjoyed Helmet's costume here where he's kind of like wearing uh, Thor's helmet, it seems. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not, because he kind of looks like Thor here. And yeah, they're just having a good time. And this is where Saya basically shows up and they get ambushed. Saya basically tells them that they don't know where they're at, that this is a dangerous area. And her brother's group basically breaks in and says that they're here to pick up Saya. And uh, there's some really cool cameos in this uh, little you know scene because we get to see character looks like like ryu one that looks like he-man one that looks like wonder woman one that looks like superman like there's just so many characters in here freddy krueger and jason a uh, robocop there's like so many like little easter eggs right here little cameos but after that we get to see that basically one of them come in and say that this that uh the kuroki clan basically wants saya to come back and that her brother wants to speak to her so they basically start fighting and Helmet does pretty well. Helmet actually has learned how to fight to kind of like protect himself and take out the people that he doesn't like. Uh, so he does a really good job against these people. But remember, these guys are trained assassins and someone like Saya is so good at fighting and she's not even close to the top of the list when it comes to these people. You know, her older brother probably is a very good fighter. And the Kroki clan must be great if Saya was sent to King's Dominion to, you know, get trained. 
So they basically have a fight uh, with all these people. These two guys come in basically that are like super ripped, super jacked. And they basically attack each other, kind of like making fun of how strong they are. And basically go after Zenzeli and Saya. Now Guan basically is fighting off the people as well. And him and Helmet kind of like help each other out in this situation. Kind of have to help each other out to survive this whole uh, encounter. But yeah, basically Saya gets into a fight with the masked people. And she does alright, she does good on her own. Uh, but she knows that she can't beat them, so she starts running with Zazeli. And eventually Zazeli, when Sai is about to get killed, basically uh, unlocks like her inner self. Basically, like she shows how she really is. Uh, because in the beginning of the book, she basically shows that she's like a very Christian person. Uh, but I believe this will get revealed her backstory in the next volume, but we'll see. Uh, I can't remember exactly what volume it's revealed her backstory, but yeah, it's kind of like just a ruse, and we're gonna see what Zazeli actually is. But she basically kills both of these guys by not fighting them, but actually using like a sledgehammer or something. And yeah, it's brutal. And basically like she says that she told Saya before that she doesn't need any help. She doesn't need her help because she's a monster basically. And this is where we get Saya basically and uh, Helmet and Zazeli basically they're all running. And Guan wasn't able to make the jump with Helmet whenever they jumped to get away from, you know, the Kuroki clan. And Guan basically tells Saya if she can help him. So Saya is basically helping him get up off of the edge. And this is where uh, one of the Kuroki clan members, the guy that's in charge, it seems, tells her that she still has the problem, even going to that school, that she still trusts too much. And this is where it's revealed that Guan is actually betraying uh, Saya. Basically, he's not a friend, he's not an ally, he's actually been bought out by her brother. And he stabs her multiple times, uh, just enough not to kill her, but to get her to where she can't fight. And he throws her off of the building and actually kicks her off. And she goes down into some type of pool and basically tells them that he had a, you know, a deal and that he will be rewarded. So they say that he will get his reward and to go collect her. And yeah, so is basically in the water bleeding out and it seems like she's going to be captured. So we're going to have to go rescue her, it seems. Now this is where we go into the final portion of the book where we're going to Fernelli, Nevada and this is where we get to see that these people in gas masks are being called to fit some type of uh, plumbing leak or something, some gas leak. I think it's something to do with like fecal matter, like waste. And one of the guys basically turns on the other and basically knocks him out. He says that he doesn't want to leave him here, especially, you know, lying in, you know, fecal matter. But he really thinks that he doesn't want to see what's going to happen next. And he grabs two pistols or two pan guns. And yeah, he basically gets one of the guys to go in and blasts him away as well as other people. And you're probably wondering who this guy in the mask is, but I'm pretty sure y'all can figure it out. Uh, we get to see this dude basically torturing a woman, a girl, basically electrocuting her. And the dude in the mask basically, basically shows up and attacks the dude uh, by, you know, hitting him in the in the neck and the balls basically and electrocuting him. I mean, that would be a horrible way to go out. Um, eventually, the guy with the mask shows up. He unties the girl and it's revealed that the girl is actually Maria. Uh, so, you know, now you can probably tell for sure who the guy in the mask is. So he reveals, he reveals himself basically to Maria. And this is where you get to see that Chico's mother, basically, which I wasn't sure if that was his mother or not in the last uh, video. But yeah, it's confirmed in this video, uh, you know, in this volume that she is the mother. And uh, Chico's older brother basically kill one of the dudes, one of the bodyguards, as he ran instead of trying to stop, you know, uh, the dude in the mask. And yeah, they basically get ready to fight and this is where Maria shows up from it seems like a closet or something and she decapitates uh, the mother basically saying that she's gonna meet her husband in hell and she go and yeah, it's pretty dark scene She cuts her into like pieces like I've never seen anything like this really in a series Yeah, you know, especially a series like Deadly Class that yeah, it's brutal, but like this kind of went like next level um, so yeah, so basically the older brother gets mad. I mean rightfully so that was his mother uh, And tries to kill Maria Maria makes a break for it and goes out of the you know The building basically the house that she was being uh, Tortured in and this is where it's revealed that the guy in the mask is Marcus and Marcus has a rocket launcher And he uses it to uh, shoot the dude basically he actually lands a hit on him which already would have killed him 
but then the explosion goes off with Marie outside the house and that's it he's dead finally dead like she says and this is where Maria and Marcus see each other in, a, in the first time for a long time and they basically just see each other and basically uh, like Marcus says that you told me once that you couldn't count on anyone to be there for you and I'm here and so this was a very good development moment before the both of them showing that what happened in volume four and you know volume I think it was uh three volume three or two uh whenever they were in the bus and they were kind of having that heart to heart basically saying what they needed to work on uh that it finally was worked on and it really feels good to have this conclusion of course you're gonna have more troubles you know in the future volumes because the relationships just aren't perfect uh, but this was a good closing point to end Volume 5 on, uh, showing us that Marcus is alive, Maria is alive, and they will be back in Volume 6, it seems. And yeah, that was Deadly Class Volume 5 uh, Carousel. It was a really good volume, guys. Um, I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. Um, there's some parts in the story that whenever I was trying to remember if I liked it that much, uh, I wasn't sure. And Volume 5 being the case that they introduced a ton of new characters, and they made it seem like Marcus was actually dead. Like, they did a really good job making us actually believe that Marcus was dead. Um, with, you know, the reveal being at the end that he wasn't. And Maria was a nice, you know, twist that we did get to see that both of them were alive. Uh, I've forgotten how good it actually was written. It's a really good volume. Uh, considering that they're all new characters and we haven't had that much time with them. They were all likable. They had really, really likable personalities. And the whole Guan being, you know, bought out and actually evil reveal was really nice. I can't wait to see how his character is going to be dealt with in the future volumes. But that's going to be all, guys. Uh, I'm sorry that it took so long to get Volume 5 out, but I've been kind of sick lately, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, but hopefully Volume 6 won't take that long to, you know, for me to drop it. And yeah, uh, be sure to like the video. That always helps the channel. And be sure to share it on social media to uh, grow the fan base, guys. I would love to get more people talking about comments, talking about Deadly Class especially, and checking my videos out. And But yeah, until next time, guys, God bless you. Until the next lesson, keep on reading those comments. I am who I'm meant to be. My future needed clarity So I could see how you